as Kindness Kangaroo coming live from the Kindness Kangaroo Library. Today we have another story time session and this time we're reading the book The Adventures of Bentley Hippo and you're probably if you've been following along you're thinking wait you already read that one and um, I did read The Adventures of Bentley Hippo but this one though is about inspiring children to accept each other which is a different version of um, or it's a different story of uh, The Adventures of Bentley Hippo. He has lots of adventures and so this is just another one of his adventures so it's different from the previous one but the previous one is posted on the Candace Kangaroo Project YouTube channel so you can go ahead and go there and listen to that story as well and then you're getting more of the adventures of Bentley Hippo um, so as always after our story I have a little craft idea for you to take the story further so uh, there's not too many materials needed for this one um, but you can replay this video uh, here on the Facebook page or on YouTube um, and, and uh, re hear the story again and then do the craft once you have all the materials that you need. All right, so The Adventures of Bentley Hippo, Inspiring Children to Accept Each Other by Argyro Graffi and the illustrated by Michael Reyes. Uh, again, second of this uh, story, uh, series that we've been reading in the Kindness Kangaroo Library, so go ahead check out the first one and I do believe there's a few others as well so I will post underneath how to get um, how to connect with the author and get more of the books um, and so make sure you do that as well all right so as we can see this is Bentley Hippo and if we uh, followed the last book you'll be familiar with some of the characters um, and so uh, follow along again we've got a few new characters in this book again Bentley and his friends, Jackson, Daisy, Marty, and Toby, floated down in their hot air balloon. It landed near a pier, and they jumped out. Bentley, a voice began to speak. It was Julia, his friend from the hospital. We have a surprise for you. Bentley was surprised. His new friends from the hospital were gathered holding a large banner. And see, the banner says, thank you, Bentley. Bentley loved surprises. He was eager to find out what it was. He was so happy to see everyone, especially Julia with her big bright smile. But why were the children thanking him? Always wanting to go first, Jackson began to explain. We wanted to thank you for being so kind. Bentley looked at the others. They were all in on the surprise. Jackson couldn't hold back anymore and blurted out, Look, Bentley, look! Turn around and look! Bentley turned and couldn't believe his eyes. Was he seeing things? Up ahead was a rocket ship, a real one. You're going to the moon, Bentley, Julia said. Bentley was so excited. He was speechless. His dream was finally coming true. Whoopee, Jackson hollered. This is it. You're finally going to the moon. You never gave up on your dream, Bentley, and you never gave up on us, he grinned. You taught me how to share and how to be patient. You taught me about bullying and friendships and being kind. And you taught me to have hope and to never give up. Bentley felt proud. He managed to help all of his friends. He beamed. I'm glad I was able to help. And I can't wait to go to the moon with you all. Bentley was so excited. He bounced from side to side. He cheered. He laughed. He danced. He'd never felt so happy. They arrived at the gate by the rocket ship. A tall man in a uniform met them. He looked at the friends and checked each of them out, then let met Bentley past the gate and onto the ramp. He hooked the rope back onto the post. Nobody else will ride in the rocket today. Why can't they come on the rocket ship with me? Bentley asked. The man pointed out some things about every child. Too bouncy, too pink, wears glasses, and on he went. Bentley's heart sank. His excitement turned to disappointment. This is your dream, not theirs, the man said. Jackson leaned towards Daisy and whispered, I don't like him. He's not very nice. Shh, replied Daisy. Bentley was torn between his friends and his dream. He walked down the ramp, looked at the man and said, I have decided that I'm not going to the moon if my friends can't come with me. I suggest you start walking, the man said, pointing to the ramp. 
This is my dream, sir, but my friends are more important to me. Before the man could respond, Bentley continued, You're not very being very kind, and that's not okay with me. You should always share your food, your stories, even your dreams, as Sherry makes them more special, he said. And you should be patient, too, blurted out Jackson. And you shouldn't bother bully others, Marty added. You were mean when you said those things about us. You shouldn't pick on others because they are different. Do you see Jackson, Bentley? asked the man. He gets overly excited at times. And Marty over there, well, is darker than other lions, and the hair on his tail has fallen out. Daisy is pink, which makes her look different, and sometimes she stutters. Toby wears glasses that help him see better. Billy has curly hair. Julia doesn't have any. I walk on two legs. All other hippos walk on four. We are all important, and we are all proud of who we are, whether we have differences or not. I am me because nobody else can be me but me. We are special and unique in our own way, so without my friends, I'm not going. You're right, Bentley. I'm sorry. Sharing your dream with your friends will make it even more special. I guess I need to be kinder, believe in myself, and accept others as they are. He smiled at Bentley. And don't forget to share, Jackson called out, just like Bentley shared his ice cream. The man looked at Jackson, puzzled. Didn't you already mention sharing? And what ice cream? He giggled. That's Jackson, and that's why we love him, Bentley said. Thank you for helping me see what kindness means makes everyone happy and that I was very wrong to judge you and all your friends, Bentley. That's okay, Jackson replied as he bounced around. Chuckling at Jackson, the man said, I think the right thing to do is to let all of you go. They climbed aboard the rocket. Jackson was last. He turned and waved to the man. Come on, hurry, we have to go. The doors closed and they were ready for liftoff. It was an incredible ride. Everyone shared stories, told jokes, and gazed out at the stars. Seven, eight, nine. Jackson, what are you doing? Bentley asked. I'm counting the stars. You missed a few, said the man. That's okay, I'll just count them on our way back. The entire rocket ship burst into laughter. Oh, Jackson, Bentley smiled. The ship landed. Bentley was bursting with happiness. He had never seen anything more beautiful. He looked at all his friends. His dream had come true, and it was perfect. This has been an awesome adventure, Bentley, Toby called out. I'm having so much fun. I can't wait for the next adventure. What are you going to do now, Bentley, asked Daisy. Smile. Look, they're taking a selfie picture. That's why they're all smiling, and they're all having such a good time. Look, here's a different, here's some more books in the Bentley series there. So if you get a copy of the book, you can check out all the other books as well. So I think this is a great story because it talks about we are all different and that's what makes us special. And when we share things with each other, things can be a lot more fun. And so that's why Bentley wanted to share his dream with all his other friends and uh, about going to the moon. And so they all got to go to the moon together, which of course is just make believe because we can't all go to the moon right now. <laughs> all right, so from the story Adventures of uh, Bentley Hippo, inspiring children to accept each other, we have a craft. In I was inspired to create a craft from this book. So see, it's inspiring in a lot of ways. So for this craft, you're going to need a paper plate. It could be a little paper plate, a big one, doesn't matter. Um, you're going to need some circles cut out of construction paper or regular paper. Uh, some strips that are cut out of um, cardstock or paper that's a little bit heavier because they need to be able to stand up. So if you had regular paper, they'd be a little droopy. So hard enough, not as hard, you don't need as hard as cardboard, but you could maybe cut them out of a cereal box or out of cardstock if you have some. And what you're going to need is a paper fastener. That's these kind of like clips that you put in a hole and then you can bend them down. So sometimes they're called brad, sometimes they're called paper fasteners. I don't know where it's easier to see it. Okay, so those are the things you're going to need. 
Now this paper plate is going to be your moon. So feel free to decorate it any way you want. You can draw, paint, put on some construction paper, however you want to make it look like the moon. Um, maybe you've seen pictures of the moon. Maybe you've looked in the sky and seen the moon. Um, there are usually craters or holes in the moon. It's kind of bumpy and rocky. So decorate your moon any way you like. And these circles are going to be the helmets that they wear when they go out to space. So if you remember seeing, it's actually on the front cover of the book, you can see that they're all wearing helmets to go out in space. So that's what the circles are. So have as many circles as you want and you're going to draw faces um, in them. So you can draw your face or your family. You can draw your friends, whoever you think would like to go to the moon with you. Um, so let's get your imagination inspired and who would you like to take to the moon or draw Bentley and his friends going to the moon. Maybe you want to take your dog to the moon or your cat to the moon. Draw whoever you want in these circles um, because they're all going for a trip to the moon. So it's a great way to tell your own story about the adventures of your character going to the moon as well. So build some storytelling skills as well. Once you've finished drawing your pictures on fizz, you're going to glue them on the ends of your strips. Um, because these are we're, we're going to need these to attach the moon so glue those on and then probably getting some help because this is a little bit of a harder step you're going to take your paper fastener and you're going to put through your paper plate so make a hole in your paper plate and then you need to make a hole in each of the other ends of your strip not the end with the circle attached but the other end make holes in those as well then you're going to attach to the back of the paper plate you're going to attach all these strips so you go through the plate, attach all the strips, and then fold it down to hold it all together. So then what you have is you have your trip to the moon. So you can see here I've drawn Bentley and Daisy and Jackson all going to the moon. And because, oh, here's my moon. See, I've drawn a few craters on the moon. Um, like I said, you can paint it, you can color it, you can put construction paper on it any way you like. But because we have the paper fastener at the back with all these strips, now you, all the friends can go around the moon and have some fun playing on the moon. And what's important is that they're all going on the moon together and playing some fun. Your strips don't have to be quite this big. I made them a little bigger so you could see exactly what it is I was doing. So here's a fun craft to have put your imagination of who can go to the moon with you. And then maybe you can create your own story about the adventures um, of going to the moon. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this story, um, The Adventures of Bentley Hippo, inspiring children to accept each other um, and the craft. And I will see you again on our next, next story time session.